Hi internet, me again. Um, a couple of weeks ago I did a video uh, regarding an auto shutdown that I had added to my A8 printer. And I've had a lot of comments saying, well how did you do it? Can you sort of show us the wiring diagram? Can you give us a G code for the end bit? And so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to be tackling that in this video today about how it was wired. One of the things I want to quickly talk about is I keep seeing in a lot of forums about wiring, or I've done it this way and I've done it that way, is this fine, is that fine, can this work, and so on and so forth. The wiring, you're buying a kit, you're gonna to need to wire this up correctly. You need to understand what is going on and why it is important to use the right size cabling for what's, what's happening. Um, so I'm going to use an analogy of water Bear with me, I haven't completely lost the plot. It will make sense, hopefully. Imagine you've got a water tank, and then there was a pipe from the water tank to a public drinking fountain. For the public drinking fountain to work, it needs one litre of water per second. So I've marked it as one. Which means you need a pipe that is big enough to supply one litre of water per second. You push the button, the water comes out, you have a drink, happy days. That's fine for that scenario. Imagine we've now got a house. And in our house, we've got uh, just four items here. A kitchen, a uh, kitchen tap, it needs one litre of water per second. We've got a washing machine that needs one, a toilet that needs one, and a shower that needs two. Now, you might think, well, that's the maximum, the shower. Therefore, I just increase this pipe so this pipe can produce, um, or deliver, should I say, two liters of water per second. Well, that's incorrect. You have to take the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is that somebody's doing something in the kitchen, the washing machine's running, somebody goes to the toilet and somebody's in the shower. You add them up, you get a rating of five, which means you need to increase this pipe to an, enable five liters of water per second to get to the house. Now that's not to say that all of those things are gonna be running at once, but the worst case scenario is they could, so that pipe has to be able to deliver. So how does that work in terms of um, wiring up your A8? How does water relate to current and power? and ampage, sorry. The water tank is your electric supply. It's what you plug into at the wall. The pipe is your cable. And your house is your printer. In order to get your printer to work, we now need a thicker cable because in this particular case, let's say we've got our house here, but we're going to replace our house to our hotbed and our water tank, which is our PSU, our power supply. The hotbed and the hot end obviously draw a lot more power because they are heating up. That is what they do. So which means the cable that you're using to connect from the power supply to your hotbed or your hot end needs to be thick enough to draw for the current, or in this is say the, the analogy of um, enough water or enough current to get to it. The difference with between water and the electricity analogy is if it was water, it would just trickle out the other end and for argument's sake in your shower, if it wasn't thick enough pipe, you just wouldn't get a lot of water from it. When dealing with electrics, if the wire is not thick enough, this is going to try and draw too much current, too much power, ampage, through this cable. And what will happen is this cable will fail and it will burn out. So unlike a water pipe, just won't deliver it properly. With cabling, the cable will actually burn out. It is very important that when you're wiring up things like your hotbed and your hot end, that you use correct size cable. With the hot bed, when I rewired mine, 
I used uh, here in the UK 1.5 millimeter cable, which I think in the US is 16 gauge. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure there'll be a table somewhere online that you can get the conversion for. Um, but you needed to make sure that the power going to your hotbed, the, the cabling could handle the demand. So the demand on this end is what they call the amps, how much load it has, how much current it's going to draw. And it's going to draw that regardless. It's going to, or should I say, it's going to try and uh, draw that regardless. If this cable isn't thick enough, that cable will fail. So it's very important that you understand that when you're cabling things, that you understand the difference between ampage, current, your loads, how the balancing works, how your cabling should work when you're wiring things up. Okay, so the main part of this video is uh, how I did the auto shutdown, how it was wired. The first thing I'm going to do is explain how a relay works. Um, now, for those of you looking at this video at the moment, uh, there's a bit of tape on the bottom of this. In my haste doing these this afternoon, I mark these up the wrong way around. What I want to explain is how a relay works. A relay is a really, really simple idea, um, but a lot of people get very confused by it because they, they think it's complicated. A relay has basically two parts to it. The first part is a coil, and it's an electromagnet. You supply power to it, and that turns into a magnet, and in this particular case, it pulls this piece of metal downwards. A relay has three connections on it, or normally three, you can have them in multiples, which I'll get to in a second. And they are marked NC, NO, and C, and that's where the tape is on there because I marked that up wrong. These stand for normally closed, normally open, and common. What does that mean? When you have got the relay not powered, it's just sitting there doing nothing, there is a connection between the common, which is connected to this, and connection down to normally closed. The state normal, in the case of normally closed, normally open, is, as I say, the state when it's not doing anything, is what it's, when it's not powered, and it's its normal unpowered state. So if you put a, a electrical connection or a meter or something, you will get a connection between normally closed and common. If you put a meter between the common and the normally open, there is nothing. So what actually happens when you energize the magnet, the relay? What actually happens is this piece of metal here, this is a bit of a crude drawing, but it's a simplistic drawing, is pivoted on that point. When you energize the magnet, it pulls that down. When it pulls it down, it forces this to connect to this side and breaks the connection this side. So with it energized, you've now got a connection between normally open and common. When you de-energize it, this thing springs back up, this is spring-loaded, that pops back up and the connection now goes between normally closed and common. Now the advantages for using a relay is the electromagnet is normally a very low power, very low current, but the switch, the contacts, can be high power, high current. So you could use, let's say you might find that your magnet's only 500 milliamps, which is half an amp, but the contacts may be able to switch loads of 10 amps or 20 amps. The configurations of a relay is, as a general rule, you will always have a minimum of five connections. You've got your normally closed, your normally open, your common, and your positive and negative. Some relay configurations come with multiple sets 
of these. Now, a set of normally closed, normally open, common is called a pole. So you might have a two pole relay. And what a two pole relay means, it has two sets of uh, normally open, normally closed and common. The relay that was used to do the auto shutdown is a two pole relay. Now I'm gonna put, I'm based in the UK, I'm gonna put a link to where I got this particular relay and any links that I can find to the switches and things that I used. Um, but anywhere else in the world, you are going to need to find a two pole relay. What this basically means, you will have two sets of connections. So, let's get rid of them and bring in our oh, that's connection. So, what have we got? Well, firstly, we have our relay board. Our relay board has a positive and a negative, which fires the relay. It has two sets of contacts. Well, we've got normally closed, common, normally open, normally closed, common, normally open. These are independent to each other. These are completely separate and you can wire different things to them. So on one set, we've got our main power supply going to our printer and we've got the neutral going straight to the power supply. We've taken the live up to the common and then we've taken the other side and connected to the live here. Okay, so this is now beginning to come our switch to turn on and off our power supply. In terms of when a relay fires, as you can see, we've got some little dots here, three little dots. In terms of when um, during the circuit diagram, you have three dots, and one of them is always going to have a line between it because it's either that state or that state. So it's either going to be like that or like that. Okay, there or there. And it's always going to be switching round the common. In this configuration, or sorry, in this drawing right now, they are sitting to the right hand side, which is the normally closed, which means there is a connection between normally closed and common. We have <clears throat> what we call a bootstrap power supply. Now, in the video that I did uh, last week, I referred to a bootstrap power supply and somebody was like, oh, where to buy a bootstrap power supply? I need, didn't quite really uh, explain this well enough. A bootstrap power supply, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, is, is not a pe special power supply. It's just, it's just a straightforward 12 volt power supply. Um, it's called a bootstrap. Uh, it's a technical term or a term that is used uh, for circuitry. Um, it is just a separate power supply, nothing special about it. Let's see if I can find something similar. Uh, it's just a straightforward power supply. Uh, this one happens to be nine volts, which is wrong, but <clears throat> it's nothing special. All it is, is you just need a separate independent power supply to your main one. And it's called the bootstrap power supply because that is powered all the time. So that is plugged on, plugged in, sorry, and nothing ever happens to it. We've then got our switch. Now, <clears throat> on the printer, I'll put a picture up on the screen now. I put a three pole, a three position switch, and no, not three pole, three position switch. And this is it here. It has a central position, it has one, and it has two. So it literally just sort of rocks between there, center, and off. And it has three connections on the back of it. That is represented by this box. We've got position two, position one, 
and common. Now the common central. In this particular case, this switch, that is your common, it's the one in the middle, and when you switch it one way, it will connect between, say, there and there. You switch it the other way, put it back to the middle, it's nothing, switch it the other way, and it will switch between there and there. The reason this is a, a ideal is because you can have a, a, an off position, and then I've connected one as being my override, and two as my automation. <clears throat> we have a micro switch. Uh, I'll also put a picture up on the screen of this. The micro switch is fitted to uh, the hot end, and the idea is, is when the print finishes, the head lifts, it travels to the right hand side and pushes the switch. And the head's been deliberately set slowly, moves across, hits the micro switch, and that's it. The whole thing has now been shut down. Now, micro switches work very similar to how relays work. They have a common, a normally closed, and a normally open. When the relay, sorry, when the micro switch is not depressed, it's not, it's just sitting there doing nothing. You have the connection between common and normally closed. When the, it's pressed, you have a connection between common and normally open. We then have, in the middle here, a representation of a reset switch. The reset switch is just a push button. Uh, I happen to have a toggle switch that is a momentary switch. Momentary means you push it, it will connect. When you let go, it disconnects. So it's, it's literally just like a, just a button that you push, like a doorbell. You push it, it connects, you let go, it disconnects. So what we've now got to do is wire this lot up and I'm going to do it in sort of a couple of stages and hopefully in a way that will make sense and you'll be able to follow the diagram. Now, with us in the first part of the video, I talked about water. Imagine these lines that I'm about to draw as being hose pipes, okay? And also, when you were a kid, you probably were given uh, sort of like the little books by your parents where you had to follow the squiggly line somewhere up the page and you'd find the treasure at the end of it. Following a circle diagram is very much the same as that. Work out where it starts and follow it. Follow the squiggly line, follow the line round. So if you sort of follow how these things are connected, and if you imagine as to say that it is water that's flowing through, you'll be able to work out where the water goes. So the first part we are going to wire up is the override state. And the override state is permanently on. So yeah, I put it into position one, printer light uh, comes to life, that's it. So first connection I'm going to make is to our negative. The second connection, I'm gonna come out of our boot strap power supply. I'm gonna to go to our common. And then I'm going to go to our position number one. So, in the analogy of this being water, water is flowing to there, that's good. Water flows out here, gets to that switch. If you put the switch in position one, which is making connection across there, Water can now flow to the positive. This will make the relay fire. And when the relay fires, it's going to switch this state here between common over to the normally open, therefore making a connection there. That flows through and the power supply will turn on. So that's our first connection done. The second bit, we need to make what they call a latching circuit. Now a latching circuit is pretty much how it sounds. It's going to latch. It is, you're going to create something 
that latches on and stays on. To achieve this, we need to use the other side of this switch, the micro switch, the reset switch, and the relay itself. First connection we're going to make is from our three position switch down to our micro switch, which is connected to our uh, hot end. So we're going to come out to here. And we're going to connect to there. So, once again, following the diagram, positives coming through there. If you put the switch to position two, it can flow down there, down there, to there. And it's now at this point. When the head is not, when the head's just sitting in the middle, we want the power to continue out of the micro switch. So we're going to connect to the normally closed, which is obviously connecting to there. And we are going to come out and we are going to join to one side of our push switch. We are going to connect the other side of our push switch up to here and we're halfway there. So if we follow the diagram from the positive to the common through position two down here through a micro switch which is in a normal state the head sitting in the middle the power can flow up and it can get to this push switch. If you push the switch the power will go across there. We'll now go to here which will put power to our positive and the relay will now fire. The problem is if you let go of that switch well the power can't go across there that's going to disconnect the power supply goes off. So we need to create something so that when that is pushed the relay will stay on and that is what we're going to call what they call a latching circuit. We're going to use the other set of terminals on our relay to create this and it's very very simple. We're going to take a wire from there and we are going to connect it to our common on the other side. Now remember these are independent to each other. You would remember this side has got mains power on it so do not start wiring these two things together because you will get a very short but rather spectacular light show <clears throat> and you will bring forth the magic smoke. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are now going to take a wire from the normally open I haven't really left a lot of room here to do this but let's try and draw that across up to there so if you follow this flow through <clears throat> from our bootstrap through position 2 through the micro switch because the micro switch at the moment the head sitting in the middle of the bed it's fine <clears throat> excuse me it's come to our push button switch we push that button, the power flows through there, up to there. The sooner that energises, both of them are going to switch. So that's going to switch and that's going to switch. That means the power supply is going to turn on here. And here, because we've now made a connection across there, the power that we picked up just before that switch is coming down there through the common is now connected, it's now coming out the other side and going up to there which is powering the relay. So what's actually happened, we've used the relay to supply power back to itself for one of a better way of putting it. You have created a latch circuit. That will now stay on permanently until one of three things happens. Firstly, you turn off your bootstrap power supply, well it just kills everything. Secondly, you put your switch back to the central position and by doing so 
you kill the power, which is going through all of that, and obviously through to there, it will disconnect it. Thirdly, the bit that we want is when the head travels to the end, the little micro switch will hit the end, it will change its state from there to there, and therefore the power this side has now been broken. And because the power is coming through that relay, and that's the bit that's holding it open at the moment, the relay will drop, it will flick back to its normal state, and when it goes back to its normal state, our power supply will shut down. It is a very, very simple circuit. I'm going to leave that on the screen just for a, a little bit and see if I can slightly... There we go. I'm going to leave that on the screen for a bit it's just so that you can um, pause the video and do a quick sketch of it. So there we go. It's really not that complicated to do. Um, I'm gonna put, as I say, links to the relay board that I used. The relay board, if I remember correctly, uh, I haven't got the specs in front of me, but I think it's about eight amps that it can actually switch. Um, but you've got to remember that this side may be switching eight amps, or it can switch up to eight amps. This side is very low current. This is just, is, you're just a little magnet just to allow it, the, the relay to click. And that's when, as I say, when you, if you've ever heard a relay uh, go, they normally sort of say, you say the relay clicks. And it's exactly what it's doing. It's, when you energize that, that clicks down. And it's literally that bit clicking down into position and staying there and then switching between that state and that state. So that's all it's doing is when you energize that, it pulls that down and there we go. So I hope that is of some use to you. As I say, I'll put as much information as I can uh, in the descriptions below about how or where the bits I got and so forth. As I say, make sure that you're confident in what you're doing. Um, in terms of wiring, what I did is I had my external power supply. I just quickly printed up a little board thing to mount that on, a little sort of uh, mounting block. And I wired the switch and I brought three wires down. I wired up the micro switch and at the time when I wired up, I did actually wire up all three of them. I only needed two, but I wasn't sure which way I was going at the time. Uh, so I wired all three and then the push button's only got two on it. I brought them all together. I then used some terminal block. Um, I'll get some. <clears throat> terminal block, chuck block, I'm not quite sure what they call it in the US, but where I sort of terminated all the wires to make sure that everything was connected the way I wanted to. The relay is the most crucial part that you're using here is You've got to make sure that, um, now in the UK, I measured the the load on the power supply on the main side. Um, I think I measured it at like 0 .0, 0 0.7 amps. Uh, so it's less than an amp on the main side. Um, in the US, I believe that would be higher because there are uh, different voltage. Um, so you need to make sure that whatever relay you use can switch that. Uh, normally on the power supply itself, it will tell you what the the, 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 the the wattage and the current draw and, and the, the, the load is, at which point you can then go, well, okay, if it's a six amp power supply, I need a relay that can handle switching a six amp power supply. Um, as I say, and on this side, just be very careful that you do not confuse or get these wires the wrong way around. You've got to remember there is, here in the UK, there's 240 volts on this side and there's 12 volts on that side. If you get them wrong, well, the magic smoke will come and um, there will be some colourful language probably. Um, that's it. Uh, I should say, I hope that is of some use. I'm going to be doing another video soon. I, I've decided to do a little project. Um, I'm sort of working on testing it at the moment to see whether it actually is going to work. Uh, if it does, uh, it's just a little silly thing I want to make. Um, uh, I will do a video on that. Uh, 
I would also like to say uh, a big thank you to to everybody that suddenly subscribed to this channel. I only sort of really did this as a in a sort of a way to hopefully help some people. Um, and I've suddenly, in the last couple of weeks, suddenly got a load of subscribers uh, rather randomly. And some very nice comments. Um, uh, it kind of makes it worth doing when people are...